The High Frequency Oscillatory Ventilator by Dr. John Arnold. Please note that in this video we will be following the guidelines used at Boston Children's Hospital. Some of this information may need to be modified based on the equipment, guidelines, and practices in place in your institution. I'd like to take several minutes to demystify this device. This is a high frequency oscillatory ventilator, as you know. This is the Sensormedics 3100A. And when initially confronted with this device in the ICU setting, many people are confused. Let me help. This is simple. This is the mean airway pressure, and you're familiar with that number from conventional ventilation. Uh, and this is the amplitude. This is the delta pressure, measured proximally in the ventilator circuit. These are really the only two numbers you need to concern yourself with. When we transition to high frequency, almost all patients are on 100% oxygen. Uh, we typically will pick a frequency based on the patient's size. And Samantha, uh, a 13-month-old, roughly 8 kilogram child, we're going to pick a frequency of 10 hertz. And virtually all of our patients are managed with an I to E ratio of one to two, giving a percent inspiratory time of 33%. So we're gonna ignore these two numbers and focus on these two. So as you know, when we transition to high frequency, we will typically transition at a mean airway pressure five to eight centimeters higher than we were on conventional. And one typically sets up the ventilator prior to transition. Now you can increase the mean airway pressure knob in one of two ways. You can adjust mean airway pressure by manipulating the size of the orifice on the excretory limb, which is what I do when I manipulate this knob. So I'm increasing mean airway pressure and I'm decreasing mean airway pressure. And the other way to manipulate mean airway pressure is to increase the flow through the circuit, through that fixed orifice. And that's called the bias flow. And we can do that by manipulating uh, this knob all patients need to start with a bias flow of 20 liters per minute. Occasionally, when you've uh, increased mean airway pressure maximally by closing the orifice, you will need to increase the bias flow to further increase the mean. So I'm gonna now increase the bias flow from 20 to 25 to 30 liters per minute and look what it's done to the mean airway pressure. It's increased it dramatically. Let me go back to 20 and you'll see that in reverse. 25 and 20. So that's mean airway pressure. Now the delta pressure uh, is displayed here. It turns out we adjust the delta pressure by turning the power knob. So you actually increase power and that generates a higher delta pressure, which is a measured variable. And we increase power simply by turning this knob. So I'm now aiming to increase the delta P to 60 by increasing power. The delta P is the peak to trough pressure, again, measured proximally in the ventilator circuit. And to increase it further to 65, we simply increase power in another increment. So very simple device. The conventional ventilator is complicated. This is not. We focus on mean airway pressure and delta pressure. I hope that was helpful. That concludes our video on the high frequency oscillatory ventilator. Thank you. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback. What did or didn't you like about this video? Was the content too simple, just right, or too difficult? Was the length too short, just right, or too long? Any additional comments? You can either click the Start a New Discussion button and type in feedback or send us an email at openpediatrics at childrens.harvard.edu. Note, feedback is not required to complete this activity in the Guided Learning Pathway.